Good morning and welcome to the first consideration in hashtag Land of Tomorrow, the light of sovereignty entitled those barbarian or uncivilized. Come along with us. First consideration. Those barbarian and uncivilized. An individual ever having seen multitudes of people imagining more can't fathom man's magnitude where the wind blows barbarians hither and thither, and uncivilized they seldom find peace. What divides the law of man from that of nature or historic from prehistoric but the word which was in the beginning, and the word was with God and the word was God. The gaze transfers from one to another affirmation of the word in that, when a speaker says horse and another listening looks to him in agreement not just that that thing is a horse, but that it is an English horse. So, with an English gaze we approach the world surrounded by others who think the same, living and dying never knowing how outnumbered and outmatched we really were. Hailing from a far off distant island they felt their story beginning with King Arthur, an author, or some type of authority should be spread from biological expansion. Ah, Thor, Leo Thor, Luther certainly from Lutheran or Scandinavian from origin of theology. As Ang in German means relative so certainly Saxons are concerned. Coming from an Angeloid perspective we sympathize more so with those we are familiar where mental bonds link us to others who imagine a horse when it is said. Those calling a horse a fruit are from an alien administration is were we to natives. Whether barbarian or uncivilized those with more anger and aggression could win the day where possibly wrong and bad tyranny may reign again as war is past tense of to be. Natives were scouting throughout their territories more so peacefully for thousands of years before Columbus. As interaction increased trade began with language wherein the gaze seeing natives as tribes and not kingdoms was cause for some alarm, because mutual respect is something all men deserve. Knowing the English weren't the only barbarians exploring the wilderness of North America relationships had been built with natives where Europeans became dependent upon trade. As the language gap decreased and native forces who spoke more it than English were being trained by in this case French there was a growing need to arm natives more familiar with an English persuasion. With the European came firearms and the race to have as much or more in the event strategy was defensive, and the fight was to the last man. To say natives were uncivilized while we were those barbarians is ridiculous. Sure, there were those native with more energy than many others but that comes with youth and beauty. To disrespect one, is to disrespect all, and as in any native force there was this notion of sovereignty that comes from biological. As few of this previous debtor's prison could look natives in the eye without knowing that they were further down on the totem pole in this land than natives were. Natives say that Englishmen speak with forked tongue as some valued their trade and protected their traffic while others of lesser wealth and nobility weren't as amicable, but why? The simple answer is fear of mass hysteria. Just as if aliens from outer space had been here before, we couldn't acknowledge it because we can't or won't acknowledge anything greater than ourselves, and we once called natives uncivilized. Peace is something where tyranny is not, and where anger and aggression reside logic may lose the battle against emotion when that ought not be the case. To say natives were uncivilized is merely a product of perception where those with fear called them so, but those higher in rank would see strategy, if they were to survive. Fear breeds negativity and sends a warning signal to others, but in the wilderness of North America seeing no higher authority colonists clung to the only crown they knew. As small as Luxembourg is and recognized as a kingdom, what would make researchers think natives hadn't reached that level of consciousness? For all researchers could be filled in more books, but national parks are so expansive that if natives still live there, we wouldn't know because they are civilized. With emotion at the vanguard of colonists assaults against natives and biology separating natives however far assimilated into the English Empire, surely nobility is another animal. Just as millions were named Elizabeth after the late queen, and Hispanics named Jesus, there was a mecco, chief, of every band of warriors. Tyranny approaches where order recedes and the light of sovereignty is lit however dimly, but with ethics and morals society is established and men are calmed by a peaceful home. War, however, is the pastime of any lesser ranked man where longing for liberty, death is wagered not thinking of detriment but the benefit. In the midst of war liberty is taken freely as the precipice between victory and defeat increases and one finds oneself triumphant. We all know what victory feels like, but Europeans had natives fight fire with fire regulating weapons and ammunition so that their victories if any would be short-lived. We wouldn't trade two guns outside the family, if we only had three, because not in the business of losing, all seek mutual benefit. English-speaking natives needed weapons to fight French-speaking natives in the hashtag land off tomorrow and those English needed their light of sovereignty to shine more so than those French. This feud of European politics spilled into the New World producing an untold number of natives dead in present-day Kentucky. We say untold because how many natives dead on the battlefields was never recorded. Whether barbarian or uncivilized those with more anger and aggression could win the day where possibly wrong and bad, tyranny may reign again as war in German is was. Being an invading culture, English to natives were seen as uncivilized. The barbarian occupation of the New World would introduce the diversity of European monarchies here, while denying native sovereignty. Without acknowledging that their peoples could comprehend the concept of a king and certainly not an empire, war was only so because it was perceived as such. In a hashtag land off tomorrow such respect is a foregone conclusion as the light of sovereignty is studied in peace and experienced through war. Join us next week for the second consideration. Thank you for your time and consideration.